Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Hand of Fate 2. In the previous episode, we defeated the Judgment Challenge, unlocking the world and the final challenge. But we will not be tackling that yet, as there are some things that I want to do before we move on to the very final challenge. These aren't things we necessarily have to do, but there's something I'm going to do anyways. And that is basically that there are three challenges on this map that can be turned into hard mode with specific cards. And I may as well get the hardest out of the way, the that empire being... empire is falling apart. It even turns against itself, even as it destroys the world around it. That being the strength challenge. Uh, for this one, I'm going to be bringing on Malacalypse. For the encounters, as usual, you're going to want to add anything that can give you food or healing. Let's see, uh, get rid of this. Da, 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 da. Let's see, resources. Yeah, I guess that always card good. is one of your favorites. I don't see the appeal. And Fable Beast is tempting, but. But, there is the chance of getting that health reduction. Same thing can happen here, but at least I'd have control over it, so yeah, I'll take Popper's Dilemma. And I'll take Thomas the Ogre. Ooh, wait. Forget Popper's Dilemma, I'm gonna take the Waterfall of Youth. Why wouldn't I take that for this challenge? Now, this hard mode is not going to change the... How shall I put this? the aspects of it, but it is going to change some other things. In order to do this, you need to have, if I can find it, the jousting armor. It doesn't tell you here, but in order to unlock the token for this, you need to bring it with you into the strength challenge. As you can see, it automatically becomes a brimstone card. So, yeah. I'm probably also going to take the pious robes for this, just in case I have trouble with food, so there... And I'm going to remove Trader's Urge and replace it with... Oh, that's easy. Lionheart. Uh, as for our supplies, as usual, I'm going to take the extra food, the healing spirit so I can get that healing off right away, and the extra max life. Though I'm not sure if that's going to do me any good, because the max life applies before the encounter. Huh. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Yes, as you can see, the strength has now become a brimstone card. So, yeah. Uh, also, along the way, I'm going to tell you guys about one card in particular, the Blood Crescent, that I am not going to be going after. Because in my eyes, it's just not worth it. Here we circle to a topic dear to my heart. Revenge. Yeah, it didn't matter. Not by much. Better taste of blood is the first indicator that you're still alive. Blind and disoriented, you make out a voice calling to you. A pair of hands shoot you upright. Wake up, coin slave! As you open your eyes, you see Malacalypse leaning over you, looking the worst for wear. What happened? Malacalypse gestures for you to be quiet. He presses his back up against a boulder beside you and grimaces, holding his side. As your head clears, a booming voice echoes out from deep in the foggy marsh. Oh, where have you crawled, gasted mice? Let your insides be gut and bones be crunched. You peer around the rock and from the mist steps an ogre, three times as tall as a man and with a lump and vicious face. His one good eye darts about wildly as he surveys the area, hunting for something. The ogre grunts and scoops up a broken, shining trinket from the ground, splashed red with blood. Ruined with your dirty blood. Wretched cut purses. Riven in two, his great hideous face turns red. If thou listen here, I will find the twin, and then I will eat thine eyes. The ogre lifts his club and smashes a tree trunk in anger. The 
tree creaks and crashes to the ground as Dragnar the Ogre turns and disappears back into the mist. It seems your armor did little to protect against the beast, Malocalypse says examining you. You look down at your armor, now tattered and bloody mess of metal plates and leather. We must seek out a smith and get it repaired. Because jousting armor is in the deck, strength will be harder. Jousting armor defense is reduced to zero. Malocalypse grimaces as he holds his sides, attempting to hide the severity of his injuries. Here, you are injured. Eat. He throws you a medicinal herb bun. Weak to your bones, you gratefully take a bite. And the bread turns to ash in your mouth. You consume one food. Food does not heal. With a sinking realization, you pull the other half of the ogre's trinket from your pack. Sure enough, you feel a wrongness emanating from it. Yeah. A stab of hunger hits your stomach. There is only one thing for it. You must steal back the other half from the ogre that almost killed you. The closest town is Drapier. Malocalypse whispers hoarsely, We cannot hope to defeat an ogre now. Summoning your remaining strength, you lift yourself to your feet and stagger to town. Oh boy, this is going to be a difficult one. As usual, I'm just going to use up my artifact to heal up as much as I can right away. Now, unfortunately, we are not going to be able to get gold on this. Not that it matters. You see, here's the thing. Re equipment doesn't really matter on this one. Trust me on that. Oh, Armor of Gluttony, that would be so good if I could get some gold. Unfortunately, food also still matters, but anyways. I'm not going after the Blood Crescent. Why? Well, you'll see. Oh, also, I get to explain how this is hard mode. Yeah, starting from the very beginning, you have to deal with two monsters at the same time in the Stirring in the Mire. And it's only going to get worse. I'm probably going to stick with the Raiders, in which case I should switch over to my Sword and Shield. Also, you don't have to worry about having the uh, jousting armor on your person. It just has to be in the deck when you take care of things. Now then, the Blood Crescent requires that you take on the Deadly Forest. First time you encounter the forest, your only option is to enter it. You will automatically drain three... Uh, draw three life pain cards, and the encounter ends. You cannot make any progress and gain its token until the second encounter, upon which you must make camp on the fringes of the forest. I'm no happier to be here than you lot. At which point you have to get a dice roll of 10. Or not 10, of 16. At which point you will get the token which will unlock the friendly forester. Oh, I gotta be more careful than that. And I will get into that after this fight because I need to concentrate. fail the dice roll, but it's at least 7, nothing happens. If you get less than 7, because I didn't know that the numbers truly mattered in this, then you get a life pain card. Alright, let's see if we can't get some equipment. Because... Back bones. I hope you have learned to be their master. It would still be good to have it. Unfortunately, we don't get it. Yay. Anyways, with the Treeful Woodcutter, you get a card gambit, in which case, he will turn around and end up swinging his lumber directly at your head. Huge success or regular success are the same, you get out of the way, otherwise you have to draw a pain card. If you ask him about the forest, what he carries, blah blah blah, ask him how he avoids the dangers, then he will offer to part with his ring. However, you would still need to pay a ton of gold. How it's determined, I have no entirely... no clue.
Honestly, I think it's just however much gold you have, but who knows. Oh yeah, Wetlands Ambush. Thankfully this one isn't made hard mode, and it's only two anarchists. So, once you get that, you then acquire the card. You can haggle over it. You can only do it a maximum of five times. Then, you have access to the Ring of Protection of some sort. Uh, hate it when they double team you like that. I mean, smart move, but still. I'm having a hard enough time in this challenge not being able to deal with food. So, you get the Forest Guardian's Ring, which, unless it's changed, still requires some form of fame to you. Yeah, you need five fame. That doesn't seem like much, but still. So, then you need to get that, and you need to acquire the ring with that fame before getting to return to the Deadly Forest. Oh boy. Anyways, let's get these supplies. You get to... You get to return to the Deadly Forest. You find some creature there and a sword, which is revealed to be Blood Crescent, in a stump. You gotta declare you're a great warrior, blah blah blah, then he gives you the questing maces. Now, if it had ended at just getting through the forest, okay, fine, it would be well worth it. Problem is, it's not, because then you have to get through ten different cards, aka the questing maces. Each questing mace requires you to do a specific thing within one challenge. The first one requires you to defeat 15 enemies in a single challenge to win the token. Okay. Not bad. Then you have Questing Mace 2. Questing Mace 2 requires that you defeat 20 Corrupted to unlock the token. Thankfully, it doesn't need to be done in one challenge. Not too bad. The corrupted aren't too bad. Sorry, just looking at all this, seeing how I want to go about it. Then there's Questing Mace 3. Questing Mace 3 requires that you kill da, 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 20 Northerners to unlock its token. Which, no prizes for guessing what you get, another Questing Mace. Questing Mace 4 requires that you kill 20 Empire to unlock. Now, the Questing Maces are all considered heavy weapons. There's a reason for this, because the next Questing Mace, Questing Mace 5, requires that you kill 20 Thieves, which, with a heavy weapon, is not going to be easy. After that, Questing Mace. Come on. Questing Mace 6 requires that you kill 20 skeletons. Then we start to get into the more difficult ones. Questing Mace 7 requires that you kill a Wraith. The easiest point to find a Wraith would be within the Lover's Challenge at the very end, which means you would have to go through that challenge in order to get this one easily. There is also the sun where you could find one in the jail, but it's not a guaranteed thing. After that, Questing Mace 8 requires that you kill three mages. You can do that during the Emperor Challenge, so eh, there's that. But you'd have to do the challenge three times in order to get it. Questing Mace 9 requires that you kill a Necromancer, and the earliest point at which you can find a Necromancer, if you have already defeated Malocalypse's quest, because as you know, you do get a, uh, a Necromancer there, would be in the Temperance Challenge, which is not an easy challenge. 
And lastly, you get Questing Mace 10. Which requires that you defeat an ogre, which the earliest you can do that is here in the Strength Challenge. After that, finally defeating that, you also get Questing Mace without token. So, hey. Now, I should note, the Questing Maces are part of the supplies, so... You don't have to worry about finding it and defeating those guys, so that's something at the very least. After all that, you finally get the Blood Crescent, which, for all that work, I just don't find is worth it. Yes, it has the Sanguine Blow, which deals 200 damage baseline, and only requires 9 hits to charge up. But, you get the Blood Pack, which causes you to lose 50% of your maximum life when you equip the card and consuming power, which means it deals 30% less damage to corrupted and undead. If it wasn't for those negatives, I might consider it. But with all the work you have to put in and those negatives, I just don't find it to be worth it. Anyways, I've pretty much showed everything that's different within the strength challenge. So I'm probably just going to skip around to each of the story-based things. Because the King's Road stuff is different. And you know what? I think I'm going to buy the uh, Armor of Gluttony. I don't have the fame for it yet, but I will soon enough. So having that extra defense plus the food bonuses would be nice. Approaching Drapier's gates, you notice a woman of enormous stature. Yeah, that's Ariadne. We already know her. God to be praised. I thought surely you'd be dead. Look at you. That foul beast didn't hold back now, did it? Bard, I told you to keep her out of trouble. You should know better than to steal from an ogre. Blocklips shrugs and winks, then winces from his injuries. Ask her about the jousting armor. Well, I'll be, it, if it isn't the jousting armor. I dare say it's seen better days. You should take it to Anders. Who are you? Yeah, this is pretty much all the same thing. Let's continue on. Ariadne shakes her head. One blow for a Draknar's club would crush you. You won't survive unless you get a good set of armor on you. Listen, I help run a traveling forge. It's currently heading here. Come see us, and bring that tattered armor with you. I'm sure Anders will be keen to see it. Yeah, here's the thing. You're not going to be able to give them any other equipment but the jousting armor. So it would be impossible, unless you get supremely lucky with some good equipment, to get gold on this. That's why you want to do them separately. But yeah, pretty much everything that I've shown you is the same outside of those things. So I'm just going to skip around to the various story-based ones. Hopefully I don't die in the process. Who knows? And I'll show you them as they come up. Okay, managed to make it to the next area. Took a few hits and a risk, but I managed to get through it just fine. Haven't gained any new equipment outside of Dark Thirst. Which, unfortunately, that having that's not going to do me any good unless I encounter some, uh... Corrupted. Which, by the way, that's one of the things we need to do for one of the other hard mode challenges. The column of smoke and the clang of metal are the first signs that you're in the right place. As you round the bend, you see the forge outside the gates to Blackwater. You spy your new acquaintance, Ariadne, assisting a blacksmith on the bellows. Ah, there you are. Ariadne says with a smile. She removes her gloves to wipe her brow. These are the two I was telling you about, Anders, she says to the blacksmith. I almost broke this one's wrist in an arm wrestle. Show Anders your armor, Ariadne insists. You lay the remains of the jousting armor onto the bench. It is barely holding together. The plating is dented and joinery frayed. I must admit, it's normally only horseshoes and farming equipment I mend these days. It's quite an honor to be working on the jousting armor. Ari's father made this suit, you know. Ariadne scoffs and leads you away from the forge. 
We're heading to Cottonmore. Perhaps you should meet us there and see how it's coming along. Draknar will be hunting for your half of the Odysseus charm. We should try and find what gear you can. You and Malakalips thank her and continue on your way. And I will see you guys later. Okay, back at the King's Road. Uh, I know this is something I probably should have mentioned before, but... I am telling you right now, abuse the hell out of Malakalypse's shield. Seriously, it will save your life. If you don't have the shield up, and it's still on cooldown with him, just hang back, protect yourself, don't get hit. Okay then, you find the forge at the gates of the town of Cottonmore. A column of smoke bellows from the stack and you hear the familiar clang of metal. Anders greets you as you approach. It seems like so long since I've worked on something so fine, Anders smiles. It's an honor to finish a work that Ari's father started. He belts an armored plate with a hammer, but Imperial steel is fickle. You have to get the furnace to just the right temperature. The plate drops into a trough of water with a hiss. I'm heading to Evergreen in a few days. Meet me there and I'll have an update. You thank the blacksmith, and together with Malakalypse, you continue on your journey. See you guys at the next town. Okay. We're finally at the next of the, uh, transitions. Your hunger pains have long since subsided, replaced with a heavy numbness. You know you must face the ogre very soon. Also pretty much gotten back up to maximum life, thankfully. You spy a column of smoke in the distance. Wreckage strewn across the road alerts you to the fate of the traveling forge. You rush to the forge and find Anders sitting on a wooden stool amidst the debris. Startled, but otherwise okay. Ah, he says, looking up. I was hoping you'd find me here. The ogre, ogre Dragnar ambushed the forge while I was traveling to Brayden. I'm fine, but the beast took the jousting armor. I could not stop him. The smith stares at the ground. You know... Ari never talks about it, but this is the exact thing that happened when her father first made that armor. He, however, did not part with his work so easily, you see. He claimed the ogre's eye, but the ogre... Well, you know the rest. I thought finishing his work would bring me some closure, but I fear I have failed him. Please, help Ari before she does anything foolish. With no other option, you set off towards the ogre's lair in search of Ariadne. And I will see you guys at said lair. Okay, made it to the test of strength. Uh, I, uh, did take on Thomas the Ogre. Unfortunately, I accidentally selected the attack immediately, which basically just gets you a fight against an ogre. And if you beat him, you do get the achievement Thomas's Bay. Didn't really matter because I didn't really need the equipment anyways. Mist pools in the foothills as you approach the ogre's lair. Bones of fallen champions litter the way, picked clean by vultures. Their weapons lay here and there, rusted by the damp and twisted by the weather. You catch up to Ariadne as she charges through the hillside. In her hands, she carries a massive mace, its face fashioned from the traveling forge's anvil. Let us see how he likes it when my forge fights back. This place gives me the creeps, Malakalip says between breaths. I trust you have your finest armor equipped, Coinslave. I don't want to repeat what happened last time. This is no time for caution, Ariadne says, pushing past. Let me at that beast. No one destroys my father's forge and continues to draw breath. Where are you, monster? The silhouette of the ogre looms out of the mist. He raises his club above his head and leaps down from his perch, smashing the ground in front of you. The poor fools come happy to their death, he grins, displaying a mouth of yellow, jagged teeth. Crunch, crunch, the little wagon went, and such pretty armor I did find. He waves the restored jousting armor about. Dust your bones sing as beautifully. Ariadne bellows in defiance and charges at her foe. Draknar swings his club wildly, catching Malakalips and sending them flying. Then the ogre swings at you. With surprising dexterity, Ariadne leaps to your aid, taking the blow in your stead. Battered, she crumples to the ground at your feet. There was no way you'd be able to take a blow of that magnitude in that armor. She huffs blood bubbling from her mouth. But I'm afraid I won't be much help now. 
Drachnar roars and charges into battle. For not having high enough defense, you have failed to win the gold token, which we already have. Ariadne is removed from the fight. So be it. Yeah, it's pretty much the regular fight, but you're doing it on your own. Honestly, Drachnar is not that much of a threat. If you beat him once, you can do it again, even if he is Brimstone. Even amongst ogres, Drachnar is feared. Once he was a leader among their kind, but those days are long gone. Now, you don't have Malachalips to rely on for this, so yeah. You're on your own. Try not to get hit. But if you can stun lock him by using your special, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. The ogre defeated, you help Ariadne and Malakalypse to their feet. Then you see it, shining under a pile of bloodied rags and small bones. Half of Odysseus' charm. The two halves of Odysseus' charm slide together, and with a rush of a relief, you feel the curse lift. Beside the ogre lays the stolen jousting armor, its appearance almost unrecognizable. Yes, we have gained the token Nicely from Jousting done. Armor. And it has become the Platinum Suit. Knockdown Bash. Charge Bash causes a knockdown to a single target when activated. Basic Bash causes a brief stun. Resist damage. Enemy enemies inflict 10% less damage. Light and flexible armor with the defensive heavy armor does not affect movement speed. To any of you who have played a... Uh, who have played... Hand of Fate 1, this is this game's equivalent to Mithril Armor. Protection of Heavy, both the movement speed of light. So yeah, this is awesome. It does require 18 fame to equip, but so be it. By the gods, Ariadne gasps, slumping down on a stone. Anders has outdone himself. Not since my father's day have I seen a suit so exquisite. Her eyes begin to well up. I doubt a single item in the Imperial Armory would be more sturdy. As dusk falls, Malakalypse builds a fire with the last of the kindling. I miss him, Ariadne whispers. Yes, with that we have beaten the Brimstone Strength and unlocked the Platinum Suit. But even with that completed, we are still not finished. Next, we will be tackling the High Priestess. But with that, we have come to an end for this episode of Hand of Fate 2. If you guys like what you see, please leave a like, subscribe for future content. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications for when I upload, or to hit the straw pulling to vote for our next Let's Play. And please, leave a comment down below this video. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching.